Lauren Sprague. Um, Mark Nelson has asked me to record a short video on behalf of Lancashire Development Centre to try and keep coaches and players engaged during what's a difficult period for, for all of us. Um, so I'm going to try and talk a little bit about some of the specific positional skills required to play fullback and for aspiring players, what sort of things you might want to try and be looking at to, to improve. So I think the first thing to look at is, is what's your role defensively. Um, so without the ball, you're often the last line of defence. You've got a lot of space to cover. Um, that results a lot of times depending on who you're playing against, where the, the opposition might be kicking the ball in behind that front line and and somewhere where you aren't. So, so you need to be able to cover the ground quickly. You need to be able to anticipate the kick. Um, ideally, if you if the ball is a high kick and you've got your, your depth and your positioning right, you'll be able to take the ball in the air. Um, you don't want to let it bounce off. The, always a risk. You don't know which direction the ball is going to bounce. So, so the best thing is to be able to cover that ground and get hold of the ball on the full. You need to judge your speed of approach. So get to the space it's around about going to land quickly. Uh, and then when you're when you've tracked the ball and and you're getting to where the ball's going to land, you you need to be able to attack the ball. So so if that's a contestable kick like a box kick off nine or or a, or a high ball that that a ten or a fullback or, or someone, someone might have put up that they're trying to chase back, um, you want to try and get there first and, and have enough time to to get underneath the ball. So so when you're attacking a high kick, um, it, usually your approach would be a one-footed takeoff. So if you think about long jumpers and high jumpers, they are of one foot drive the opposite knee up as as high as you can. Get your chest and your eyes up, eyes always on the ball, um, but driving up towards the ball. Um, arms together, so so your palms are facing towards you as you're moving up for the ball. Um, elbows in tight, so so when you're getting up and, and you're reaching towards the ball, you can you can create a big space and the ball can can land in. So elbows in there, the ball's not going to drop through the middle. If the ball hits you on your chest, your shoulder, or, or on your arms, you can pull that in nice and tight and bring the ball down to ground. Um, then once you once you get to ground, ideally if you if you get the ball to ground without any contact, you can uh, use your agility and accelerate out into space. Or if, if there is a collision and you are getting tackled, then then you can use your skill and strength to, to fight to make sure that you win the ball back. Um, I think that most, most players have a preferred foot to take off um, and that's okay. I, I, it's not the sort of thing where you need to do 50% do of your practice on, on either foot. If you've got a preferred foot, then, then fine. Just be really, really good at, at getting up off that foot. You're worth practicing off both sides because you never know um, when you might have to take off from the other side. But um, but yeah, don't don't stress too much about that. Um, the 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 other the alternative that you might take in terms of trying to catch the ball in the air would be if you're if you're trying to re ret retrieve possession. So if it's a cross field kick that's coming, you're trying to attack that, or you're up against someone who's really good in the air. You might want to take up um, and try and catch the ball overhead. And and the difference there, the the takeoff, the acceleration and takeoff with that that real big push and drive that opposite knee up to get yourself high would be the same, just with your hand position. So you might you might start with your hands in front and you'd be driving your arms up in front of you like you would do um, with a line out take and try and catch with your with your fingers up, arms over over stretched and catch at the, at the top of your at the top of your height. It's not as safe a catch. Um, obviously big hands um, big hands and good grip will be will be helpful for it. But if you're up, if you might need to use that at times, uh, and the same thing would be if you're trying to get up there and tap back, try and drive up, get your arm up as high as you can, get past the ball, get into the space where you win the collision against uh, against an opposition player, and you can tap that ball back down to to one of your players. Um, the ball obviously doesn't always come in the air. Uh, there's times where the ball gets kicked in behind you. You need to uh, you need to turn and and chase it, whether it's bouncing or rolling. Uh, and you might be taking it moving towards um, towards both touch lines. I think it's important in these situations that you that you make sure that you're safety first in terms of getting the ball um, in your possession before the attacker can get through. So so don't allow anything that's that should be your ball to turn into a 50-50 by being slow on your chase. Get your body in between you and the and the chaser to make sure that you can um, that you can make uh, you can get in and win the ball and, and it doesn't become a 50-50. Your team then, in reality, a lot of times the team would want you to be safe. So if you've had to turn uh, and trap back to to take a ball that's been kicked into the 22, into the corner, you have to take that and your next thing might be to kick it off the off the pitch. So if you're a right-footed player and you've run towards the left touch line and you pick that ball up, actually it's an awkward kick. You're set up to kick off your left foot. So, um, so being able to kick off both feet is important. Also, the ability to take it, readjust yourself, and get into a kicking position would be would be something that's worth practicing, um, and it's something that you can practice as well. Um, 
And then in terms of risk versus reward from these sort of situations, if you're turning and tracking back, the ideal the ideal thing scenario will be that you've got both things in the toolbox. So you've got a 60 metre kick that you can turn and bang the ball back um, past the opposition 10 metre line. And then your team are challenging for a line up in the opposite half. Your forwards are all happy for you. But also, if you've got unbelievable sidestep and acceleration, you can run back to the same space and keep possession. Then uh, I think a lot of coaches and players will be happy with that as well. So, so when you are winning, while well, you are winning the ball in the backfield, important that you've got the ability to run, kick, and pass, um, to get yourself into better positions for um, for the team. Um, so, what sort of kicks you might need? So, a long clearance kick off both feet, obviously preferred foot. Uh, the one that you kick most of the time is the most important one. But being able to kick off both feet really important. Chip and regather. So if there's a strong line chase, you can chip over and win it back. The same a grubber that you can uh, that you can kick and regather. Easy things to practice. Just take time um, after training sessions. If you're taking the ball and you need to link up with your winger, so a good quality long left hand and right hand pass are important. And again, your ability. If there's a broken line in front, of you, you can see a small space um, to attack and get into it. Is all also useful. Um, so that's when the opposition kicked to you. Um, we probably need to work about you need to think about your depth and where should you stand. So, so lots of teams would have defensive systems that help you understand that. Uh, I think most teams at the moment are using either a two back or a pendulum style defense. So, so if you're a full back in a in a twos up or a two back defense, um, you're pretty much playing like a left and a right full back. If you're on the right hand side, you might have a scrum off or a fly off as someone else who's on the other side, and you're working like two full backs. So it's harder for the opposition to kick into that space. It means your front line of defense can be a little bit more aggressive and your role there would be just making sure that you're taking the last defender on the on the side of the pitch that you're on so you important that you're connected with your if you're on the right hand side that you're connected with your right winger um if the ball if they take the second to last man and the ball goes across to the last one you need to close that space down and make that tackle if the ball's going away to, to the other side you're letting trust in the other player to do that um to do that work on that left hand side the other way of, of defending the pendulum it is a pendulum defence, so it's a pendulum where where three parts are connected. Will be your two wingers and your fullback. So if you're again, if you were if you were stood deep, um, the ball was moved towards the right hand side. Your right winger would would go up and close the space down and connect with the with the outside centre, and you would cover uh, and go and defenders and, and take the last person, and and your left winger would come in and cover the space behind you. The ball then gets moved back towards the other way. The left winger goes back. You you go into that space and the and the full back. So the pendulum, all three are connected, always working. Your twos up defence is is slightly easier in terms of less space to run. Um, so it's not as hard work. Your pendulum, you might have more players in the in the front line, so that might be an advantage for your team. If you're particularly fit and good at covering the backfield, a pendulum system might be better for you. But that would depend on your depend on your team's preferences. Um, I think as well as that is part of knowing the system and then being anticip being able to anticipate something is really important. If you can if you can see cues from the opposition, so if you can see that a ten the opposition fly off is dropped deeper and they've been looking towards your left hand side, there's a chance that they're going to be kicking into the space there. So so you might want to move there earlier, or you might want to leave the space, have a little bit of deception, lay a trap, let them kick the ball into there, then you can go and counter attack from it. You need to be able to always be thinking what are the opposition likely to do in this position and how can I cover that? Um, I think then when you're when you're in attack, for me, a fullback's probably got two real key roles. Um, you need to be able to you need to be able to beat players one on one. Uh, it's a really important thing for for a fullback in, in small and narrow spaces. But but your two key roles would be uh, from phase playing set piece attack to be able to attack in wide channels at real speed. So linking up. Uh, for linking up with your centres, linking up with your open side winger, uh, making sure that you can hit uh, wide spaces at speed, take the ball at full speed, catch and pass, sidestep at speed uh, and get in behind that defensive line, really important. And then also on, on phase play would be your ability to change direction. So so if there's been, um, there's been a tackle on a touchline, the ball comes in midfield, you might be the first person who's thinking, can I shoot down? short side there's a couple of lazy defenders there get excited move into that space and try and attack someone um so on one on one and but also if if you do draw a, a defender have you got the ability to make a pass left hand right hand to be able to offload in the tackle if needed as well um 
so I think they're the two key things really in terms of what, what I'd be looking for from attack. Um, so explaining a little bit of what to do with and without the ball, I think it's important to understand the best fullbacks transition between attack and defence and defence and attack faster than anybody else. So so what can you do if your team loses possession? How quickly can you get back, set your backfield, get organised so that um, so that you relieve pressure on your team? If your seven can get in, steal the ball, turn it over, how quickly can you scan, find the space and exploit the opportunities that are there in front of you so that transition from attack to defense defense to attack um full back full back role is really important there in terms of identifying what needs doing next and, and then organizing um so i think finally is is just a little bit about what you might be able to do during this isolation uh, lockdown period so so i've got a, a couple of ideas so the first thing that i would say is to have a look on youtube for some highlights clips of the world's best so so what will come to mind for me would be Christian Cullen, um, Jason Robinson, Liam Williams, Willie LaRue. So different types of players where, with unique skill sets. Have a look at some highlights clips of them, see what they do really well. And try and identify what do you do that's similar to these players and try and see if there's a role model that you could pick up on and, and try and study their game uh, a little bit more. So if you're a stepper, how does Jason Robinson set up the defence to try and beat somebody one-on-one? -on -one? If you're someone who glides when they run, how does Christian Cullen do that? If you're someone who dominates in the air or really likes challenging by balls, why is Liam Williams uh, the best in the world at that? And if you're a skillful player who's got a little trick kicks and, and offloads and real good quality passing, how does Willie LaRue bring that to the game when he's playing in at full back? And, and if you can try and identify who, who you're similar to, you might be able to pick up some, some tricks that would, would benefit your game. And then in terms of practice, if you've got any sort of ball um, and, and space, you can be creative with it. And um, whether that's coordination drills, throwing a tennis ball off the wall, whether that's um, throwing, if you've got a rugby ball or any other sort of ball up in the air, trying to practice your high ball, take off your right foot, take off your left foot, catch the ball in front of your chest, catch the ball with arms outstretched, jump up and try and tap the ball back. You could practice rolling the ball in behind, turning off your right shoulder. Can you get back and dive on a ball quickly, get yourself up and set to be able to put a clearance kick in? You could do that off both sides. So there's loads of drills and stuff that you could practice, but I think it, it would be important during this sort of time and any time really when you're practicing stuff is is to just visualise and put yourself in, in in an exciting scenario. So so imagine you're in a World Cup final. Imagine um, you've got New Zealand players chasing them chasing down and you've got to win this ball up in the air and and if you can if you can play those sort of little scenarios off in your head while you're practicing at home then you never know in, in 10, 15 years time when it is your chance on a world stage, then, then maybe those things won't be won't be nerve wracking because you've already uh, you've already thought about it a million times. Um, hopefully that's been useful. Um, hopefully I've given a brief understanding of what you might be looking for in terms of trying to develop as uh, a fullback. I'm aware this is going on social media, Facebook, Twitter, that sort of stuff. So if there's any questions on there, try and tag me into them and, and I'll look in the replies. and and see if I can try and answer any questions that might be helpful. Um, stay safe, everybody. Look after each other, and hopefully we'll get back to doing what we love as soon as possible. Thanks. Bye-bye.